Anything you want, because anytime you want to say anything, so you just spot it out, you know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but until you've got something to yeah. spot out, uh, remember the story about the sweet potatoes, which I thought was real nice. If you just give That's us a little something about your dinner, it. the little party and the gifts with Stukowski and the boat and then the sweet potatoes arriving somewhere, I can't remember. Isn't it rather kind of embarrassing? Oh, very embarrassing. <laughs> but, uh, to tell that stupid little story? No, I think it was very nice. Well, I had... Uh, are you already starting? Yes, yes. Well, uh, after my very nice uh, performance with Stokowski, there was a party. I guess that he has done it or somebody for him. Well, it was in a very sumptuous uh, uh, house and I come from a shillings land, Vienna. Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark County, not Schilling. <laughs> was Mark, not Austria was, was Schilling. <laughs> yeah, Mark, German Mark. Yeah, German time. Mark. Oh, we were still in... You were still in Germany. In, in Germany. Oh, well, you see, I never know where I was. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, um, well, it was, of course, I, I, had, I had not such a kind of, of uh, sumptuous uh, life in Europe. So when I was there, was, uh, you could impress me with anything that I didn't have or saw it at home. And then uh, in that party, uh, full of questions, of course, and full of nice uh, compliments. But when dinner, uh, the dinner time came, then we first I wanted to sit, and I couldn't sit before because a uh, gentleman did hold my chair very, very strongly so that I, he was, was waiting that I sit on it. <laughs> it never happened to me before. And so, well, then I pulled my thing, and it was, I couldn't pull my chair because he had it in his hands. <laughs> and so, well, then after all, we, I, I sat. And then there was a beautiful set with lots of cutlers on the right, on the right side and on the left side, uh, qu quite a few. And uh, I had the uh, présence d'esprit, not to show that I felt uh, surprised or embarrassed, and I said, oh, that's very nice. I see that you have all kinds of cutlets. And which are now for the bread? <laughs> because they didn't have it. I knew that I would embarrass them. <laughs> and then I saw the, the soup. I didn't know it was soup. I thought it was something else. I took off the lid. I never had uh, my soup covered. But that was very thoughtful, so that the soup, uh, after that we have been speaking so much and uh, standing so long, because always the cocktails and all kinds of things what happened before, it's rather long. And suddenly they say, now it is dinner time, and we sit down. And I lift up the lid, and I saw a beautiful uh, soup in it. But what impressed me mostly, it is that, because that I knew about, because... Uh, I was brought up to see what is fake and what is not fake. The China, the Chinese, or China, the porcelain, porcelain uh, porce uh, China was uh, a, a real thin and beautiful one. So I was very careful to uh, take off the lid carefully to not break it, because I saw that it was a museum piece which was uh, used. And then uh, that was all. Uh, the impression was. They asked me so many questions that I was very slow eating because you can't. I was taught, brought up not to talk when I have, my, when I'm eating. What, and what this sweet is, potatoes? Ah, yeah, then we got uh, sweet potatoes and I never ate sweet potatoes any time before. And I said, oh, that is fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, it's really grows in your country. Oh, yes, we have that. We have fields of it also. And the day when I had to part uh, from, from, Europe, from America to go back to Europe, they asked me what I would very much like to have on the ship. I said, oh, well, if it is not too inconvenient, could I have a, a couple, a little bag with uh, sweet potatoes? Oh, yes, that you can <laughs> really have. It is very easy to be done. Now, on the, on the ship, I didn't get the sweet potatoes. I got so many other things. I got a plaid, and I got what was most important, a bag for my scores with lots of uh, uh, 
compartments. Compartments. Compartments inside. So it was so easy. That was for the chamber music. That was for, for the orchestra scores. And so it was. Uh, that was a lovely. I had that. I think I had. You saw it. Uh, so years and years. Just, years. Yeah. It was such a good leather, such good quality. And I got so many things. And even cosmetic, I got for the first time pound. You didn't even need it at that time. Uh, no, I didn't even need it, but uh, they gave it to me. Or perhaps there was uh, foresighting that they said I will need it one day. What kind of stuff? Pound cream for the day. Pound cream. Pound. Pound. Pound cream. Pound cream. Well, I got it. And then I came to, um, to Europe and Everything was there. Oh, I got cutlers because I spoke about cutlers. And I never had a round spoon in my life. And I got so 12 round spoons. I think two or three are left. Did you have some? <laughs> yes. And these, all these things are very good quality. But no, sweet potatoes. I said, oh, well, they will have forgotten it. Never mind. Oh, there are so many of our friends go to and fro to America. I will always have the opportunity to tell. Could you bring me a few sweet potatoes? And then, uh, not very long after, not, not very far away off from that time, I got a big bag, you know, a big bag of, of sweet potatoes. I was so delighted. Well, that is the story of the sweet potatoes. From Stokowski, yeah. That was from Stokowski. <laughs> and another time, I got another parcel uh, that was, at that time, $10. That was the first... Pa uh, parcel that I got from the care care parcel. Oh, and that was 20 was years later, my dear. 20 late, uh, 20 yeah, years. Yes, I'm so glad part. that I have my biograph because I mix up all the time, the time, the time, yeah. and I also mix up the time, the the yeah. times and the place but where I was. Vienna. Sure, Vienna. Vienna. Was Vienna. And After I got the, the I got a very nice parcel. We were so happy to have all that what was in it, and it was Menuchen. So that was also very, very nice. That was my first care pa pa parcel. <laughs> well, that's also a little story. Now, something else happened with Stokowski regarding the concerto and the horns. Yes. And uh, trap. That is very true. And it is a thing that, if I would say that in my words, he would not be uh, very happy to hear it. Perhaps he will not see that. This, he will not hear what I'm going to say. Well, you know, I, uh, I have never had any teacher for composition and also never had for scoring, but uh, I happened to have that Berlioz uh, book and I studied it very carefully because I wanted to have my, um, my piano concerto well scored and I said if, if it's good enough for Berlioz, that might also do for me. And then I studied it, so, but it was an old-fashioned horns um, uh, 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 rubric on either part of that book, where the horns were specially um, mentioned. And they were all in different keys. It was a horrible thing for me to do, to transpose all the horns in, in different keys. I manage, of course, because when I want something, I, uh, I make it. And when I came there, every hornist got his part. And there was a terrible discussion between Stokowski and the hornist. What do you have? What, what is the complaint? Oh, I said, well, my horn is on, my, my, my key the, my, is on the second line. And mine is on the third line. Oh, and you can't read it. Well, I'm not used to it. But you, you can't you transpose? Oh, sure. And then it went, but it went very difficultly. And they, they, they played all the honeys. Uh, I must say it's very praiseable. You can, you can give anything you want to a philharmonist. You can even put the, their parts upside down. They will read it. And uh, when the rehearsal was at the end, the first rehearsal, Stokowski said to me, you know, I think, Sonia, you have to do something about it. Can't you rewrite all that in one key? Now, Stokowski was in, I was only 27 years old, and he was in, uh, you know, when you are only a young person, the other one seems to be very, very aged, also if he was not so far away off. But the experienced conductor. But he really was an experienced conductor. He should have known 
what that means that in five days I have to put all that right. I mean, to, trans to transpose it over again. He didn't give me any help, nobody from, this, from the uh, orchestra, to help me to do that. It is, a, it is a matter for a copist to do that, not for the <coughs> composer. He knew it, and he let me there. Well, I didn't know it. My dear, may I interrupt here? Yes. It's not fair of you. He asked you, do you need the help? But you were too proud and too arrogant. And said, oh, no, no, I can't do it all by myself, you know. That's a story as far as I know it. Yes, but uh, there is a little point to that. Uh, I, I thought that he would think that I can't transpose. <laughs> I did, she was too arrogant, yeah. And I can't transpose, so I said, I don't need any help. I can't transpose that myself. And then when I came, it was five days and five nights. I had all my food coming, I mean, no, no, no food, uh, my coffee and my, my toast, always brought up to, the, uh, to my room. And I was working on those four parts to make them readable for those messieurs les ornistes. Yeah, but you were rather supposed to practice violin and piano because you yeah, played both I, with Stokowski. Yeah, I, I should have practiced and I did not even be able to do that because I was uh, transposing my, my horns. On the very day, the fifth day, I came to the rehearsal and I could scarcely not walk because I had not slept. I have not eaten, and I have. I was ready with my squaws. I gave it to the first hornist. I gave it to the second hornist. I gave it to the third. They were all very pleased. Ah, now, oh yes, madam, we are now, now we are satisfied. Oh yes, I can play that. And then, uh, when I came on the stage, Stokowski said, "What's the matter with you, Sonia? What is the matter? You are uh, uh, how we call that? Shaky, shaky." shaky. Uh, well, I have not slept five days and five nights, and so, but I'm ready. I have done it. And then, uh, no, that was for the rehearsal. The, the rehearsal, I don't need shoes. No. <laughs> not special. For the, for the but when the performance came, the day of the performance, I came over, you know, with the very uh, wealthy patrons. The wealthy patrons was Adler. Adler was uh, the, Mr. Adler. Max was, Adler. Max Adler was the uh, how you call that the owner of Sir the Robert. Sir, Sir Robert. Sir Yes. Well, and they uh, dressed me up, and I had shoes, little lack, lack shoes with long heels. My life, I could walk in long. Uh, th it's like if I would go on trapeze, and. Uh, they said, no, no, Sonia, you have to look well. You know, we are, you are in America. You are in America. You know that it is, not, it is visual. You don't only have to have your talent. You must be also good to look at. <laughs> and so she gave me that. I, I took my prints, which I always have on when I play piano, because I need very low one for the pedal. And I took them with me. I had uh, uh, hidden them. And before I came on the stage, I slipped in my own ones. And suddenly, I, when I was in the middle of the, of the hall and started to play, I hear Mrs. Max uh, Adler. Mac Adler, I hear her said, she has not the shoes on. <laughs> the Sears Roebuck shoes. <laughs> yeah, the Sears shoes, yes. That was right. Well, this is also a story which is uh, well, not very agreeable to remember. I think that Stokowski should have at least looked on all these five days what I'm doing. Yeah, but he, you got something good out of him. He advised you about Max Trapp? Oh, that was the best thing what happened in my life. Not only it was just a fate. That's a, one of the best things. One of yeah. the best things. No, the best thing it is that I found you. Ah, that's <laughs> what I wanted to hear, yeah. <laughs> well, and... Uh, when, uh, when we parted, and he said, you know, Sonia, I think that that trouble with the horns shows me that, uh, have you ever learned to score? No, I didn't. I was with a uh, with, uh, uh, book of Berlioz. And, well, it's uh, old-fashioned, I know, but it is, uh, it is a secure one. I felt secure if I pick up that, um, that method of his experience. 
Well, you know, why, why not go to, uh, when you are living in Berlin, why not go to the academy? The Preußische Academy is the very highest place where you can, where they take young uh, colleagues and young uh, artists, also young masters. Why not go to Professor Trapp? I, I only heard the best of, of him. Well, I didn't like the idea, but I, think I would think it over. When I came back to Europe, to Europe and then, how, how was You it? met him somewhere on the party, Max Trapp, and then you told him, as far as I know, it was before my time, you told him, uh, oh, by the way, Stokowski yeah. recommended me that I should oh, work yeah. with now you. I remember. Said, all oh, these I'm so pleased. Uh, by the way, when Stokowski recommended to you, he was not yet professor at the academy, but uh, when he met you in the 40s, in the 1930s, he said, oh, I'm just appointed the professor at the academy and I can take you in my master class. And I'll be very happy oh, to yes, I do remember. Uh, work with you. What a memory. And then you see, uh, the, um, when I came to him, he said to me, well, but there's only one thing you have to be, to be received in that academy. You have to have the list of all what you have already written and uh, your programs and also the critics. You know, I have critics from Europe. Well, they are such good ones that I thought that uh, I, I, st I started to believe in myself. In my, myself, you know, I, I thought I really fell from the heaven. And um, I, I brought all that. And of course, I was one of those chosen like that immediately. And um, I hadn't to pay anything. And here I was suddenly for six years. Well, I will never regret that time. And when I came for the first Wednesday, the first Wednesday, he said, I can't teach you to compose because you are a composer yourself and you know what you're doing. But I can teach you uh, something. I can give you good um, recommendations on Thanks. scoring. Look, look, here you have the violin and you have the trumpet going together. Well, that sounds mostly vulgar. Well, you know, you have only to tell that once. I don't even need to repeat that. I put it in my ears and I never did it again. Well, so those um, indications are very uh, precious for a young uh, composer to, to ride on the experience of somebody else. I don't know what is still interesting. Would you like to tell us about riding on the experience of um, Fisher? Oh, Edwin Fisher was a very unique personality. You know, he was like uh, they used to say, he was Beethoven uh, incorporating, and so he was uh, Beethoven himself. <laughs> when he played, he was also a, a Beethoven interpreter, and, uh, uh, well, he was so much uh, in the, in the uh, spirit of Beethoven that before he went to the, on the stage, he took his hair, he looked at, at the, at the uh, mirror, and he did that. There was nobody there, you could just ask him to sneak in after midnight, like Watergate. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we had lots of students here. Sometimes the water meat is really... And this, this is the one, and the second one is the second piano concerto, which she played with Jokun, you know, Jokun conducting, and there was no, there was only the performance. It was only performed twice in the and there was no tape, so we never had. But these are the two major works which are never perfect. Well, 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 they do have the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at first, the first piano concerto was the one that your, your landlady next door sent the roses. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Sent the yeah. 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 So that's another story we didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, have you, have you heard her interpretation of her violin for last song? Oh, her violin caprices on the other Can you put your glass on that? Violin caprices on the other And it makes sense. I showed it to you, I did this summer. You know, she wrote ten violin solo caprices. And uh, well, that's what you told me about it. Yeah, and four of them were played by her, and I have them on old records, but the transcripts are on tapes. They are poor, yeah.
spread by her learning. And uh, last summer, Ricci, you know, was interested, and still is interested in, uh, in Caprice. So she really, I would say, she transferred some wrote some new and so and so and so. I have them all so I said, and she always I said, you know, silks. nobody can interpret really this, soft. and I knew it. Uh, this Caprice, like I yeah. didn't say, what are you doing? You can't play some anymore. So I said, play some of the piano, and she played some of the piano. And we took three of them right. on the piano. And do you like four. that? You know? Just a moment. He took those yeah, three. Yes, he took them. And then he made me. And he, he took them for And they are so mad. They are so mad. He's acting like a limb. He really Whoever does that, so the paper well. must stay straight. And it is excellent. And not only that, it's too nice. He's really such a big technical. But he's very small person. But he's very small person. Are not difficult for interpretation. He says they are so easy or so simple. So that's marvelous. Sometimes I'd like to hear what you did with the piano version of it. Caprice. You know, and, and I have a team. So me, I can show them. And to so me, you know, who inspired her to to make one of her violin caprices for a cello, you know. With orchestra. We, with yeah, we the, shot him that. Uh, and from that he wanted it on on the thing. However, so that did not transfer just I could make it for thing, a cello. But she said I can't make it for cello alone, so she made for cello enough. plus rocket. Mm -hmm. So now I have a new piece. But I'm not giving it away because it's not yet commissioned. He wanted to commission, you know, the composer is nobody. Uh, I can't commission like Shostakovich. Shostakovich has only to tell to the Russian government, I have a symphony in my head, and then he gets one year paid at the Dacha and on the, on the, on the Red Sea, and then he can compose with the Dacha, with all his family, the family and with the dogs, all what he had. It's all that paid for one year. But that's the composer. I can't commission anything. I have to wait until I have to see me back, and if he likes it, he what he wanted, he has ordered it, and then if he likes it, then he can tell. And then he goes to Canada. Yeah, I know. I show you I how know I ordered the tapes. Yeah. The what? How I ordered the tapes? Did I not show you? I don't think so. Well, then have a look here. Oh, you mean put them in order? Yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. Have you seen the very cataloging? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, All that he did, you know. you know, we are about two months and a half away from the gallery, what Eckhart did. Uh, we work more than ever since he yeah, stepped around. Well, so this is what you call a labor of love, so, yeah. Yeah, put them on, let's see. Let's <laughs> see. A number 72. This is the one. 72. never should be coming from the stomach and you do <coughs> from the stomach. I, I do that you know I do it with another kind of weight oh yeah and so but of course um, he never was interested in my technique although he could really have very well um, needed it because he made too many efforts for the same effect of what I did and then he said to me I really don't know why uh, you uh, are able to play so much and uh, you have your violin and how can you manage all that in one day? He said, well, it's very simple. It is because I, uh, the, the technique I have is less complicated. I don't have to train it. It is not physical. It's more abstract. And I use the, the moves I have what I need every day. And uh, to move a finger alone is... ...unusual, it's acrobatic, and that takes time. Uh, but, Sonia, I think, uh, in all fairness to Edwin Fisher, you, sh uh, you uh, made a few jokes about him now, but you really should pay tribute to his great musicality and how much you learned from him 
and how much he influenced you exactly like Chagall. <coughs> I think he was one of the few music geniuses. Very right. Uh, one of the few music genius you met who gave you this great feeling for musicality and he uh, uh, praised it in yourself too. He said, uh, as you always told me, you, he said, I don't know how she can do such things. Yes, you see, I was not even so admiring Beethoven uh, as a young, very young person. I remember how when I had to play so many uh, sonats and so and my mother said, well, you, you, it is a great master. You have to love, love him. You can't, uh, I said, you can't force the love for something that you just don't want. I don't, I don't want Beethoven. And uh, he brought me, Beethoven, much closer to me, so that after, yet, uh, now that even when I play uh, the, uh, one of the sonats which I... Um, is the most closest to me, uh, the appassionata. I can analyze it, I think, like nobody. So so close it is to me. And uh, you see, the appassionata and the kreutzer sonate, I know them so much better, I think, than anyone else, because I heard it before I was born. I was, <laughs> while my mother was studying that, while she was... Uh, uh, studying that in Moscow, and of course, when I was born, I knew it already by heart. <laughs> and you were playing them when? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it is uh, a very. Berlin, no? Yeah, I, on the same. I I played that on the same evening, and uh, but my mother said there's nothing so nothing to it uh, really, because uh, before I was when I was born, you know, before I I came myself came the head of my violin first. <laughs> uh, you played them first in 1913, I think, in Berlin. On the uh, same day yeah, with Claudio Arau. Yeah. On the same day. Oh, he had a concert too, yeah. He had on the same day. Of course, he had the evening. I had only the matinee. Who was that, sir? Claudio Arau. Arau. <laughs> I was interested to ask you to speak about the... Uh, I think the son of the Adlers actually looked you up. Uh, up at Kenora, was it? Well, that was a, that was a kind of uh, a special meeting because then the ring was closed. You know, the, his father was my benefactor. Uh, how do you benefactor, say that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's your patron. Uh, and um, when he he was suddenly one day he phoned to us. Just a few years ago, yeah. Yeah, he phoned you. Yeah, he phoned. Uh, yeah. Uh, is that the house of Gramati? And of Sonia Gramaty. Of Sonia Gramaty. And Eka said, yes. Well, could I speak to her? No, she's not a moment here, but I'm her husband. Uh, you are your hus uh, her husband, yes. So I can tell you uh, many things. And she was speaking with, with Eka a very long time, and it came out that we had a date. And the date was, he was, you know, the American come always to Kenora because they can fish. And they, it doesn't cost lots of money. And they know it is only sport. It's very cruel. They fish and they throw the, the poor little animal away. Don't say such things from him, yeah. Uh, he might the, eat the fish. Who is, who, is, who is American here? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, it could be a Oh, I'm so pasta. sorry. I should <laughs> shut up. Oh, oh don't terrible. Worry, don't worry. We'll edit it. But you can cut it off. So that's good. Well, and then um, uh, at, the, at the end, you know... Um, uh, the Americans who were there were very nice when they saw that I... You throw that away? Yes. Do you want them? Yes, I would like to have them. I, that's so fresh I will never be able to buy it in a, in, in a store. Well, then I got so many fish that I could give all to my neighbors. Some, and I shared the beautiful uh, American sporty, sporty yeah. fishes. But you want to talk yeah. about uh, Robert Adler. Yes, and when we were there, and if, uh, then he spoke, yes, I know, my father had this spleen. He had always so uh, quite a few of the... Of no, but he wouldn't say spleen, Sonia. He spoke in very high tones <laughs> from his father. No, no, he spoke in very high tones, and he was a young boy when you were in... Yeah, in, he uh, said in, evidently uh, remembered in, you. Uh, Chicago and remembered yeah. you very, very well. And uh, uh, so he, and he, he said, felt he should 
he should see you again. Um, he heard from some mutual friends in Chicago that we were in Winnipeg, and therefore he found you. He wanted to know what had happened with that, the one of, of the protégé of his father. And that is why he was uh, uh, calling uh, Eckhart. And also there was a, a special thing. It is that he was uh, a little bit curious to know if I'm still composing. Well, that, that was a question which was uh, very, uh, very uh, un, 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 uh, unimportant to ask me if I still compose, because I would have never stopped. Is it that what you wanted? Yeah, no, but uh, you, have, uh, lost the con you had lost the contact with the others completely. During the I time, lost you know? them completely, you and then I asked... You saw a nephew of them, I think... Uh, Hans Rosenwald, uh, once in Chicago, uh, several times in Chicago, yeah. but you have lost the family completely. And they uh, have absolutely. moved to California, as far as I know. Yeah. It's the, the Adlers that are, are the actually the, are the patrons of Chicago. And the, uh, they have the planetarium. Yeah, exactly. The planetarium, yeah. was the And the museum, was also exact, of science yeah, yeah. and industry. Yeah, but the, they, the they planetarium has the name of Max yes, Adler. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful planetarium. Yeah. Sonia, um, could you tell us how you happened to leave England, those early years in England, and uh, start to, with your mother in Paris? Well, my life was very shortened because I only started to live and to, to be educated at seven and a half, because I was five years uh, hidden in, in England because of the kidnapping of my brother and my sister. In, uh, it was a s very sad story about um, a jealousy affair between the, my, the first husband from my, from my mother and herself. And so uh, when I was born to replace my sister, a uh, kind of a substitute, then when I was born and the first husband heard it, then he was... Um, threatening my mother, and this child will also be kidnapped. Well, you know, the Russians can kidnap somebody that you never, never know anything about that kidnapped person. It's just vanished. And so I was five years there under uh, uh, complete in, uh, in other name. There are two people of my age who still knows, uh, knew me when we went there. How many years ago? In 59. In 59. Right? And I uh, said, oh, you are Carmen Morris, aren't you? Yes, I'm Carmen Morris. That was my first day. <laughs> that was from your brother, Morris? No, no. no. no it was one of the names. You know, I have, I have uh, several uh, ages and several names, so I don't even know exactly when I was born. I only have the last passport, and that's what... I always say it's one of my ages. Yeah, you don't even know if you exist, you know. Yeah, also <laughs> not. Yeah, I'm more, a, more or less a legendary person. You have to touch me to see that I'm still here. I think you should speak about that in your in your childhood in England. Uh, all your exposure, your attitude, our 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 traditions, and uh, and that you know all the nursery stories of the. Oh, I know them all by heart. I know every nursery rhyme. So it is really uh, uh, this, uh, that, that the truth that I know them all shows that I have been there really living in a kindergarten. I know old Mother Hubbard, she went to the cupboard, or <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill. I know them all. So I don't even know them in French because when I, was, when I came uh, about... Five years old, I came just about around five years old to Paris. I was so sick and so underfed because I was always on my own in England and I didn't like my foster parents, so I was never really fed. I fed myself and climbed all the trees to nourish me from fruits, so I'm really like a squirrel. I have been on, <laughs> I was uh, the, the frightening squirrel from all the, the neighbors. <laughs> And there are so many stories about it that I told that one of them yesterday. I, tell it again. Tell it again. Once I came on one of the apples, the, one of the trees which had the best apples, I knew the qualities very, very well, because I, <laughs> I, I knew each tree. 
And so when I very came... Very selective, yeah. Uh, very <laughs> selective. And when I was on the top one day, it suddenly came an old man with a gun. And I didn't notice him very much. It didn't trouble me. I was savouring my apple. And suddenly he said, You rat! And looked at me up. You rat! You just come down right now! I said, I'm not yet finished. I, d I have not yet finished my goody apple. So, if you don't come right away now, I shoot you down. I looked at him down. I was on the better position. And I said to him, you just try. And so he went away. He, he wouldn't have shot me. I knew it. He was no murder, though. Are you interested to speak about your experiences in Paris? That you had, a, that you had a small apartment, and that it was awkward in the, in the procedure of teaching of the pupils. That you had to, uh, I think you played under a table. Isn't that so? Oh. Yes. Can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. Yeah, she's getting the flow so beautifully. Yes. Can we get her to talk about her first days in Paris? It'd be a lot of fun. Yes. Fine. Audience. Good. Mm -hmm. The whole, well, I was yes, your early days in Paris. Oh, well, but this uh, I I the French lessons in Satyr Pleur. No, that I was uh, my when we were in Paris, when we were in Paris, my mother, we were very poor, had only hundred rubles, which was at that time not so bad, but I had only hundred pay from my tante Sophie, from by the aunt, uh, which was. Uh, uh, after her, she was such a genius on mathematics that she was a professor in, in the university in Kiev. And uh, she, she held a, a, a post, uh, one of the very few uh, universities where the woman can teach or learn the same things like men. It's, I'm quite sure it's, everything is quite otherwise today. But at that time, at that time, the Tad Sophie was professor at the Mathematique and the Kiev uh, University, and she was one of the very few ones who had such a post. Now, she could uh, said to my poor mother, we, were, uh, we fled to Paris uh, to save me from, from London, where I, if uh, my mother, I think that if my mother would have died meanwhile, and I would, stayed, I would have stayed in London, and nobody would have taken me away from there, I would have been lost. I certainly would have never. Well, I would have loved music. You can't, uh, you can't uh, cut off a talent. The talent is there. I would have been a music lover, but I would have never been active. And then, when we were so poor that my mother could only get a little little mansard under, we say in French, sous les toits de Paris, then. Um, she gave lessons, and I was very fortunate that one of the ladies who came very often for lessons, for piano lessons, was one of the professors of the Lycée Fenelon. It's the highest place where you can learn in Paris. And this, uh, she, she made an, uh, a kind of deal with her that she will not be paid for the lessons, but that she will take me as a pupil. So I did never go to school. Never, I've never been in school in my life. I'm not completely lit illiterated, but it was a kind of a tutor at home, and other people have to pay very lots of money, and my mother gave only the precious piano lessons. And so, uh, to not make the, fee uh, the lessons that the pupils, when the other ones came, uh, very embarrassing, she hit me under the table. Uh, so that uh, while she was teaching the piano, she put blankets all around the table, and I was underneath. Nobody did suspect that a human li living person is underneath. And it was very boring to wait a whole hour or two hours or so. And so I had prepared under the table all my toys, which I, what I needed. And mostly I have cut off the, uh, from paper a kind of uh, pupils as a little dolls, and banks, so that I had a class under the table. And when I heard, 
entre la troisième ligne, entre la quatrième ligne, comment s'appelle-t-elle cette note Ça s'appelle Do. And I repeat it very Now, who, who of you can tell me how is it called between the third and the fourth uh, finger? How is that note called? Ah, you don't know. Now, tell me. Can you tell me that? Do. Yes, very well. And I hear that. Really. And then, the, if you can tell me for the next lesson, very quick, mi, sol, si, re, fa. And then you can reverse it. Fa, re, si, sol, mi. Can you now repeat that? Mi, sol, si, re, fa. Fa, re, si, sol, mi. Very well. No, no. Fa, re, do. No, no, no. Fa, re, si. Fa, re, si, sol, mi. And that is the way that I learned the notes. Now came the horrible day when I was seven and a half. I, w I was so ill, you know, when I came from, from, uh, from London that I needed um, two and a half years to restore my health. I was even humbucked, uh, and I was um, uh, almost one-eyed, and so because uh, the people there, uh, once you know, I when they they didn't like me, you know, very much by my foster parents, and they they hissed me in the basement, and it was a, a the floor was was stone, and there were all people coming from Russia because it was an estate from Tolstoy, Gorky, and Lermontov, you know, they, they uh, had bought this estate for the people who failed in Russia and wanted to restart a new life. It's a very interesting spot of, of England, where I belong to, and I'm one of them that n nobody can go in, but I could. Uh, but I, there's no facilities, nothing. So primitive, I wouldn't like to go back. But, but I could, I, I'm on the list. So, well, that is my home, my first home. And this, on uh, this estate, was one the, one of the foster parents who took me, and they, uh, I was a naughty, naughty girl, like they told me, and then they hissed me. That was not about two years or so, perhaps. I can't tell you at what age. And then they hissed me on one of those piles of luggage. Said, if I put you there, and you stay there, and then locked the door, and. Well, you can imagine that with my temperament and my, I would not stay there uh, on the top of a pile of luggage. So I tried to climb down, and the luggage suddenly fell, so because, uh, you know, the, the equilibrium. And I fell on, uh, I fell on, so unfortunately, that little by little I was always more and more uh, crooked. And if my mother would have not come to fetch me, I would have been humbucked, because nobody did notice that. And in Paris, she noticed that I was. See, that's a funny thing. She brought me to the to the hospital, and the hospital took a, a large blue mark pencil and showed my colon vertebral. How you call that? A spinal it's colon. Spinal column. Hmm? Spinal column. Spinal column, and it was like a rainbow. It was quite uh, round, and said, "Oh yes, you have to hang the girl." Oh, no, you got it. Oh, yes, right, right. You, we have uh, this method. And so they hang me on the sued, 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 uh, technique. And I was weeks and weeks. I had to hang uh, hours and hours. So uh, and it was very painful yes, to I get straight that. again. I'm still not quiet as a straight, but it is, uh, I, I'm normal. But if my mother would have not picked me up, if she would have died before, I would have been humbugged. How you had your first lesson, yeah? Your first lesson with your mother. Oh yes, I I, I just was interrupted, yeah. And um, my first lesson was uh, when I was seven and a half. I started everything because the doctor said, uh, if you teach something to that little girl before in her situation when she's so sick and so thin. I, you know, I, I wish I could be that thin today. And, and I was only skin and bones when I came from England, and underfed. And, well, it was, I think, I must have looked like one of the Korea children that you see on the TV, with big eyes and no, no body at all, you know, like, how you call that when the frog is not yet developed? We call that in French, teta. Embryo? Yeah. Hmm? Em Embryo? No. no. Embryo? 
No, I, I, I was still living out. I was not hidden in the... In, hmm? Temple. 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 Well, I, I, was, I, I think I looked like that. A big head with oh, lots of music which was not yet out. And then the, the body was so thin. And she said, no, you can't teach her anything before she's not restored. So I had always my, uh, the big seance to hang, too big to get straight again, because I was very, uh, almost humbucked. And then I, I had my first lesson at seven and a half. I was strong enough. My mother gave me breakfast, so real English breakfast. You know, porridge with cream, sugar, and cocoa with cream. So uh, after which you do that several years, well, then you gain, of course you gain, pounds. And so, well, I was, I was uh, uh, strong enough to start lessons. I started then all with seven and a half. So I lost from my teenage, I lost seven and a half years of my life. I started my life when I was seven and a half. So but it was from a, your teenage, you were not yet teen, but ten yeah. <laughs> Well, and then uh, that first day she put a, a Russian book before me and there was a print mistake you know that girl, Mrs. Knox, when she said that the round, a dotted round, you said you should always say ah 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 hmm ah 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 hmm yeah. But this little dot was missing, and my mother wanted to tell me. Now we are starting today the first lesson. First, I must show you. You must. I must show you how the notes are called. I know them already. Really. I told her all what I, what I knew. So the half, the first half hour showed her that I knew already the notes. I learned them all underneath the, the table. table. So I knew them all. So she was very satisfied. Oh, that's good. And it, it spares me this, though, that we can, <laughs> go, we can go ahead. Now she put that, this, do you know also how, the, how to read them? Because she always said how the notes are cut. Oh, yes, I know, I know. 